forging cyber. Forging cyber security. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and I'm here at DEF CON 22, now speaking with Todd Beardsley. He is the pirate captain of Metasploit Framework at Rapid7. That's quite a title. How are you, Todd? I'm, I'm doing excellent, Alicia. Awesome. It's always good to see you, always good to talk with you. What the heck is a pirate captain? Uh, the, the boring version of that title is, is engineering manager, and so, but it's, it's, it's somewhat piratical uh, because it's, I work on open source software, you know, open source security all the time. Um, and there are hundreds of people that, that contribute to this, and so my job is kind of like, you know, just get them on the ship and, and keep going, you know? Um, and they're, they're, all, they're all here, so that's, that's why I come. So you've got, you're the, you're the captain of the pirate ship of hundreds of people. Yes. And they're all here. And they're all here. Many of them, not all of them, right. not all of them, but no. many, many are here. And, and the, the great, for me, the great thing about DEF CON is that I get to see people that I've, that I've worked with, that I respect, that we, we get along, and I've never seen them in person. Right. Um, you know, there's, I, I met just today uh, Spencer McIntyre, he's been doing a lot of work with us uh, lately. Uh, OJ Reeves, who everybody loves, uh, also known as The Colonial, um, he's, he's here in town. Um, I mean, I can name drop all the time here. Right. <laughs> Those up. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just, just I, I, every year I, I meet at least two or three people I've never met before, and it's, it's great. It's great. Right. Yeah. So I talked to you at a bunch of different shows, but it's safe to say that DEF CON is really where your crowd is at, the Metasploit crowd is exactly. at. Exactly. These, these are my people. They um, are your people. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, everybody usually comes here at least once um, like it's it's harder to find a Metasploit contributor at some other shows that you know three right. letter acronym shows right. um, but uh, at DEF CON it's it's quite easy to run into them I've, I've probably talked to I don't know 20 today yeah. um, so awesome. so yeah it's definitely a cool crowd and um, you're definitely not the only person who brought your laptop here to the show today Absolutely. but you did bring it because I think you might want to show me something cool I do. Um, we have been noodling around on Android devices a lot, like how to own Android, what you're going to do like once you've already owned Android, stuff like that. Right. This is this is my sample uh, phone. It's a it's a Kyocera something or other. Um, it's it's probably about a hundred hundred twenty dollar phone. Um, so a little bit low end, I guess, um, for like rich hacker types like you and me. Um, <laughs> but um, but it's fairly recent. It's out of the box. It's got all its updates. Um, the and this bug is just super persistent. The, it's called the uh, WebView Add JavaScript Interface bug. It's we have been working with this. We at Metasploit and we as the security industry have been on this for like three years. And there's been assurances from the Google, who like maintains Android, that oh yeah, it's been fixed, it's patched. Um, the, between us and so we think uh, about 70% of Android devices out in the world that are on that report in uh, are vulnerable to some form of this attack with via this bug. The ACL ACLU thinks it's more like 95%. Wow. So I don't know where where it is really. It's, it depends kind of ha on how you count. Um, and so what I'm going to show you today is this phone, which is nominally not vulnerable. It doesn't have the vulnerable vo version of this software. Um, can become vulnerable quite easily by just downloading fairly popular apps from Google's Play Store. So, you know, I know you know the advice of like, well, you should never sideload apps, you should always go to the Play Store because it's safe. Well, not so much. So we're, we're gonna go through that today. All right, well, let's see what you got. I'm looking forward to seeing this. So here we are, this is the Metasploit framework console. This is the command line -y thing. Um, this is the free and open source uh, uh, interface that most people are, are using, I think. Um, you know, I would like more people to use the Pro, um, but you know, for the framework is free. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're already, I've already kind of staged this up. Um, I'm on the WebView uh, and JavaScript interface exploit here. Um, this is a big wall of text <laughs> that talks about it. Um, and what we've got going on here is that basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up a web server um, I'm going to, that is serving this exploit. I'm going to visit it with this phone um, two times. I'm going to visit it first with the stock browser to show that it's not vulnerable. Uh, and then I'm going to use this, this alternate browser that's, that's really popular. Um, it's got a few million downloads. It's kind of big in Asia. Um, it's not Chrome or anything like that, but it's, it's popular. And it's from the Google Play Store. So we're going to do that. Um, 
This is, whoops, not info. We're gonna do show options, just to make sure I got all my stuffs. And I'm on reverse TCP, that's good. Okay, so uh, the other interesting thing about this is that this payload is the version of Meterpreter for Android. Um, I've talked about Meterpreter before on this very show, uh, or whatever this is. Um, <laughs> um, and Meterpreter is our, is our stock uh, rootkit, um, backdoor, persistence module, everything. It's like, it's the kitchen sink of, of what to do after you've, you've, you've uh, popped a vulnerability. So it's interesting because this is the Android version, which is kind of new for us. Um, and we're always working on it. We just did some updates to it just a couple weeks ago. So it should be solid. Um, and, but we'll find out right now. So we're going to hit run. Um, you know, here's zero. I'm just on a local network. I could be doing this over the internet. It's no big deal. Um, it's just a little bit uh, less logistically uh, difficult in the middle of a conference and full of hackers to just do it locally. Um, so I'm using this URL uh, right here. This is uh, 192, 168, 43, 169. Um, easiest thing to do is just to come over to this uh, QR code, uh, which maps directly to that. So I'm going to fire up my barcode scanner. There it is. We can scan Alicia, no barcodes. Um, <laughs> and we're going to scan this. Okay, you can see that we've already talked to it, but that's okay, because uh, the barcode scanner, at least, is not vulnerable to this, so that's good. Um, we're going to go to the browser right here, and it's thinking about it, thinking about it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to serve the exploit. Um, it's not going to work. This is not going to work, I guarantee you, um, because this is the stock uh, Android browser, which is not vulnerable to this anymore. This has been patched in 4.2, I think, of Android. Um, and th this this uh, operating system here is, is like four, I think 4.2 or 4.3, one or the other. I can look it up later. Um, so, but that's fine. So look at that. Uh, no, no, no shells. We're really sad. Um, so we're going to go back to the QR code. We're going to do this again. Boink. We're going to open browser. And now I'm going to use my, my uh, aftermarket browser, uh, this guy right here. It's going to fire up. And Hopefully this works. We're serving the exploit. There we go. Okay, so we see up here that I've got a session. According to this, I have a session now on my phone, which means I have a terminal in there. I'm going to just put this to the side. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So I have a interpreter session. We're identified as Java. We're the Android um, interpreter is technically the Java interpreter um, with some slight modifications. Uh, we're going to interact with this. I'm going to ls. And so now I see like whatever direct, the working directory of the browser, that's what I'm in right now. Um, so I, I have no idea what this Google hot word is. I've never actually seen this before. So let's see what this is. Maybe it's, look at that. It's a bunch of stuff. I don't need, and they're like names of people. I don't know what that is. So what we're going to do is we're going to change directory like you do. And now I'm treating, as you can see, like I can treat my phone like a computer now um, with no authentication. Uh, I didn't type in a username or password or anything like this. So what this browser is effectively is a backdoor at this point. Because this bug is so old, this browser is a backdoor into my phone. Um, which, and it's, like I said, it's available on the Google Play Store. So all the advice you've ever heard of like, oh, don't sideload apps, don't get them from places you don't trust, uh, that kind of doesn't apply here because this thing is from a place I trust, from a real vendor, um, millions of downloads, vetted, available today on Google Play Store, and it is a backdoor. So what we're going to do is we're, I think, in the main directory here. We can go to SD card. This is where you save like all your pictures and downloads and stuff. I, I nearly have the permissions of the browser, but you can see I can do kind of a lot of things here. Um, I can go to the downloads, download, and this is where I you keep like this is the place I keep my Dogecoin wallet, right? So I'll look at my Dogecoins, and it's probably easier just to do it this way. Cat Doge, ha <laughs> ha. Um, <laughs> And this is the backup of my wallet. So there you go. That's this you shouldn't be able to get at like ever. Um, it's encrypted uh, there, but all you have to do at this point is grab this string, run a decryption on it, and if it's a normal password that someone's likely to type in on a phone, right. it's going to be short. It's going to be easy, and, and it's going to fall over fast. Um, 
and by the way, can get into your Dogecoin. Now. And then they can steal all my millions all of Dogecoins. Coins. I know, and I love each and every one of them. Um, you know, you could obviously. I like Dogecoin. Um, Bitcoin is the same deal. Defcoin is the same deal. Litecoin is the, all, so that's where like all those backups are. But here's something cool. Um, if I do help here, because I'm in a, I'm in a interpreter shell here, so I can do webcam. This stuff is really neat. Uh, webcam list. And so, yeah, this guy has a camera, right? Uh -huh. He's got a camera, he's got a camera. It's a little more dramatic if he had a front camera, but he doesn't. Um, but if it did, I would just pick that one. And I can do something along these lines. I could do webcam, if, if you don't mind, Alicia being my model. Uh, I'll just do one of these. I don't know how to line it up or anything. Usually, it like, does it sideways. Um, but I do a snap, and so I can take Whoa. pictures off of my victim phone <laughs> so and creepy. pop them right up. And right? Let's see if it was, should it be this way, maybe? Oops. I think maybe that way. This might be upside down. I don't know. I'm not very good spatially. You know? And I can do this all day long, right? Oh, that is upside down. Let's try one more time. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. It's a little dark. Camera's a little crappy. Yeah. Um, but there well. it is. So I have a lot of control over this phone by just merely being the browser. Absolutely. Right? Now, I know what this bug is if you have something along these lines on the, um, what is it? It's the thing, the Google thing you wear in your face. The Google, Google Glass. Glass. Yeah. Um, if you trigger this bug on the Google Glass, the default browser permissions on that gives you a lot more because Google Glass needs a lot more stuff. So if you, because if I'm going to talk and do Hangouts and, right. and dictate things and all that, like the browser is effect is like that close to root. So which basically means I get a shell on that thing on your face, right. which is a little bit creepy. And maybe someday this bug will be behind us, but it's been almost three over three years and hasn't happened yet. I I hope uh, this will get resolved somehow someday. Um, the problem is, is that the, it's it's this whole supply chain that right. puts this phone in my hand, right? Because we've got Google, who does Android, and then I have a phone manufacturer, Kyocera, uh, who makes the phone and right. monkeys with it a little bit. Right. Um, I've got the carrier, which in this case is Boost Mobile, and they put on their own things. Yeah. Uh, and then I have like the retailer where I get it from, like you, like Best Buy or Walmart or something, which is where you get these phones. Um, these are off the shelf, like burner phones. But I'm sorry, burner phones is a term of art for drug dealers. I'm not one of those. <laughs> um, but for for month to month uh, phones, like that's where this is. Yeah. So, like, who do you who do you who, who's responsible for like patching this thing? And right. then you have all the millions of app developers out there. Yeah. So, I don't know how to solve this today. Like, clearly, we solved this with like regular computers like ten years ago. Right. You know, like we just have Windows updates and it all works, and everybody right. that has patches. I. I have notified the vendor of this over Twitter like three months ago, and they responded immediately. I was really surprised. Yeah. Said, oh yeah, we'll take a look at that. Thanks for letting us know. Nothing after that. So I don't know. It's it's. You see, I get a little depressed about this. Like, right? It's, You're it's, upset that it hasn't been solved. It, it hasn't been solved. The phones are ubiquitous. You know, I've got one right here, and I can like instantly make this dude, which is like a real phone. It's kind of expensive. It's last it's last year's Nexus or whatever. Yeah. Um, but the fact that I can get like backdoored from an app in the Play Store is just a disaster. Right. I think it's a huge disaster. So an Android user, there's nothing they can do to protect themselves against this bug. Uh, if they're buying from the, you know a trusted vendor. And they're doing all the things said, that they're doing. Everything they're right. doing everything right. They're getting their updates, and yet they're still vulnerable to like backdoory sort of exploits like this. And I know like technically a backdoor is something that was put in there intentionally. Right. Um, but if I wanted a backdoor phone, so like this is exactly what I would do. I would just ship bugs. Oops. You know like Oops. that's. What I would do. Um, you know, I'm not yeah. even going to get in trouble for it. It's right. like, oh, well, you know, these guys are doing it. Everybody's doing it. Um, there are lots of apps that this is that that are vulnerable to this bug. A big part of this is the um, like the uh, libraries that are used by the ads in free apps. Yeah. You know, they're all little tiny web browsers yeah. too. And if yeah. I control one of those, then I can you know snap pictures of you on your phone. So, wow. um, so yeah, I don't know what I don't know what users can do other than. Um, Talk, talk to Google. <laughs> right. Make it, make a stink. Um, I know the ACLU, like I said, is aware of this problem. Right. Um, you know, in the U.S., um, the F F FTC uh, is aware of this. Right. Um, they want to know something to do. They want to know. They want ideas too right. of how to how to do this. Uh, I know Google's aware of it. They had floated something a while ago about how they were gonna 
they were going to do some security checking before you get into the app store, which they were kind of supposed to be doing already, but yeah. they were going to be more serious about it. Okay. Um, where, it, well, it was, it, technically it was like, if your phone is not up to like a latest-ish version of Android, you won't be able to talk to the App Store anymore. But as we can see, it doesn't really matter because I can still package up this exploit in, in an app itself, so. So yeah, Easy. yeah. Well, we'll definitely, you know, take this interview and put it out there to Google and everybody, and maybe something something good will happen because of it. Well, and that's why we publish exploit modules like this. It's just to show, like, how bam, 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 how easy it is to do for somebody who's not all that smart um, to to knock this out. Where somebody who was really smart and evil, um, you know, they would they would go a lot farther with this and and steal all your Doge coins or something. <laughs> so. Do you know one thing you've clarified for me that's really been on my mind? Because I know you're a big fan of the Doge coins. How does it pronounce Doge? Exactly. <laughs> In my head, I'd be like, doggy coins. And I'm like, I don't think it's doggy. I think it's like, I, had, I just, I didn't know. And now I know. So thank you for that, Todd. I'm not canonical on that. Then it's OK. We're very accepting here in, in the Dogecoin community and the DEF CON community. Yeah. You can pronounce it doggy, you can pronounce it doji. I like doge. Um, there, there's a couple other pronunciations. Some people just say dog. Um, okay, so uh, okay, so my brain kind of was correct on all levels with the it's, pronunciation. There's no wrong way. Okay. There's no wrong There's way. There's no wrong way to no. say it. I'm no. just going to call them Todd Coins. No, no, no. no. Since that you're a big wrong. fan. That is actually wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is great, Todd. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. I'm glad that the hacker community and your people will be able to see this and maybe something can be done about it. Hopefully. Yep. All right. Well, everyone at home, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Security Ninja TV. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Check out our Instagram. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Alicia Webb. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.